selfish. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to ask you about next week's campaign kickoff and why you guys think this. Um, so I'll ask you about the necessity for that and. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, we will get started over here and come down in three, two. Our next conversation today is with Karen Middleton, head of Cobalt, one of Colorado's leading abortion rights organizations. Karen, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me today. I have to ask, when you heard today that Republican State Representative Richard Holtorf, who's one of the loudest anti-abortion voices at the Capitol, disclosed on the floor that he paid for his pregnant girlfriend's abortion and he talked about the benefits that it provided her life. What did you think? Uh, it's such a common story. Uh, we have many people who tell us that folks who might be vehemently anti-abortion are only so unless they actually need one or need to help someone else get one. So it didn't surprise me as much as it should have. His admission came during a discussion about a resolution marking Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. I intended to ask you here today why abortion rights supporters in a state with the abortion laws that Colorado has feel the need to run resolutions like this. Mm -hmm. But is the point just to open up a microphone so that people can talk about abortion access and goodness knows what they're going to say? I mean, it was, it was a striking moment today. You know, honestly, I think it's it, part of it is recording the record and making sure that 10 years from now, when legislators who will all be different try to remember what we did and why we did it, it does create a permanent record. So I think it's a little bit about the legacy and also that, le that set the record of here was the Roe v. Wade decision, which was really never good enough. Here is the Reproductive Health Equity Act, and here is our effort to enshrine this in the Constitution. And all of that was stated in, in the uh, resolution today. Next week, you kick off a campaign to ask voters to enshrine abortion rights in Colorado's state constitution. Colorado already has some of the least restrictive abortion access in America. Why is this necessary? It is not in the Constitution. And as I said, with term limits, people change. So right now, we know we have legislators and the governor that support the issue, but down the road, we can't be sure. And given uh, how many people in all the states across the country thought that this right was one they would have forever, um, I think that the Supreme Court proved otherwise. So we're just affirming something and putting in the Constitution for the long haul. Is there a pathway of other states who have taken this same, this same approach? 
pathway in terms of something we're following or mm -hmm. something that they in should be. In terms of enshrining it in the Constitution. <clears throat> um, other states have it in the Constitution already. Um, we're the only state that's both enshrining it and uh, assuring public insurance access. So if you're a public employee and you want to choose to access abortion, your insurance doesn't cover it. And so as a matter of fairness, we want to make sure that that's uniform for uh, anyone who has insurance in the state. Opponents are going to say that's obviously using taxpayer dollars to fund abortion. Would you dispute that, or is that just flatly what it is? You know, it's uh, what we are doing is making it a fair option, but most of us pay a portion of our insurance. So to say it's exclusively taxpayer-funded abortion is probably not accurate. Um, I do think that expanding access to cover um, your own insurance, if you're a state employee or if you access public insurance, and there's um, no increase in taxes with this measure. After the fall of Roe, Colorado has become somewhat of an island of abortion access within our region, mm -hmm. and that has caused some cost and some strains on the system that provides care for Coloradans. Mm -hmm. um, different issue that's not your area of expertise, but I see a parallel, is Colorado is also very welcoming to immigrants, and that has caused an influx of migrants that have presented costs and strains on the system used to care for Coloradans. Republicans would say that we are dealing with the consequences of our policy choices on both of those issues. Do you think it's fair to talk about it like that? And I assume you think that the benefits outweigh the costs. You know, I think the benefits outweigh the cost. I think the, uh, the migrant issue is a national issue. The national folks have not taken up uh, immigration in a reasonable and fair way. And so there are resources being strained. I think for the issue of uh, reproductive rights, sure, reproductive health care is a victim of health care not being uniform, not being supported. And we're seeing that in states that are rolling back basic services for children or summer lunches. All of that's related to health care, right? Because if you have a hungry kid, they might get sick. They might not be able to go to school. Uh, if you've got migrants who are coming and they need access to health care, you know, those of us that are civically minded think it's the right thing to do to take care of people. And if people arrive and need access to abortion care, we will help them. Has has the fall of Roe and kind of the balkanization of this issue led to an effect where in Colorado, some folks might think, well, listen, there's access here, doesn't impact us, what's going on, whereas folks who are on the ground at the provider level and that sort of thing see a very different picture in terms of impact. You know, I think everyone who's experienced uh, pregnancy in their family or experienced having to make a decision about whether they're adding to their family, every time you see a story about someone who has not been able to have access, I think it brings it home. So I actually think voters are looking at what's happening in other states and saying, you know, Colorado is better than that, and we have been better for many, many years, and the idea that we'll be affirming that right falls into line with their thinking not just once, not just twice, but all of the times they face this at the ballot box. Is there such a thing in your view is too extreme of a position to hold in favor of abortion access? You know what? I don't know what I don't know what that would look like because what I see are people. Uh, if you're looking at reproductive health care and abortion is a part of that, if you're dealing, if you're a doctor dealing with a patient, you're letting them know all the options. Is it too extreme to say if something isn't right or if this is new information that you and I should be making that decision or worse, government? Um, and I would still say no. One of the most common examples that's given as that too extreme of a position is misinformation about the idea that, say, Colorado law presents, uh, pr pr uh, provides the opportunity for a child to be killed after birth. So you have situations where you have opponents of abortion, including some with legal backgrounds. I take, for instance, former attorney general candidate and future district attorney candidate George Brockler, who will suggest that children can be killed after birth because of Colorado's abortion laws. And that strikes me that, one, people might believe it, even if it's not true, and, and secondarily, that it might put providers and patients at an even greater risk of violence than what they currently face. Is that a fair assessment? You know, honestly, I think everyone who works in reproductive health care has the um, threat of violence. But what we have seen is that there's been a fair amount of civility around this issue. And at the end of the day, people who are making those decisions have largely been able to do that in the privacy of their healthcare provider um, and with advice from everyone that they want to hear from, who's, again, not you, me, or their legislator. Yeah. We've, we've talked quite a bit about how, with the restrictions on abortion access in other states, that patients have flowed to Colorado. Yes. Have you seen 
the violent threats that existed in other states flow to Colorado as well, or have those largely stayed stasis? I've heard of a couple of examples where, for example, a social media campaign of someone being followed from another state, but by and large, we have not seen that. We're, we are always worried about it. <clears throat> I have heard from many lawyers that would be happy to step in pro bono way and help someone who faces this, and we simply haven't had uh, many cases like that. Democratic Governor Jared Polis said last year, quote, Democrats don't believe abortion is good. We believe it's bad. It should be minimized. Is that what you believe? Um, I don't believe it, and I don't know if asked, again, with more lead time, if he would answer it the same way, to be honest. I mean, Have you asked him? Uh, you know, I haven't, but I've known him for many, a long time, and I believe at the end of the day, you know, everyone knows he leans toward libertarian values. He likes to figure out how to work across the aisle and more power to him. So I think that in the end, he has signed the bills that we've put before him and that uh, understanding that this uh, makes life better, saves Coloradans money, allows them to ask, access health care, is in line with what we see him agreeing with uh, in other issues. Governor Polis was actually asked recently if he supports your proposed ballot measure to enshrine abortion rights in the state constitution, and he was noncommittal. Did that surprise you? You know, it doesn't. I think uh, for... Uh, elected officials, they want to be more cautious. They want to wait and see. Maybe they want to see it on the ballot. They want to make sure we've gotten signatures. So I'm not concerned. I think he will, he'll follow it. And when it seems like the right time, I am um, sure he will be public about his decision on that. And a final question. You said you've known the governor for a long time. Do you get the sense that he is attempting to shift or at all moderate his views on abortion rights, perhaps in uh, preparation for a run for president? Or is it just that he's not particularly interested in that issue the way that he is interested in other issues? I think it's just a matter of balancing the issues and the priorities. When he and I first worked together, we were on the State Board of Education, and I see some of the things such as preschool that were issues that were a passion for him for many, many years. So I, I think that this is one of a handful of issues that are always part of this. He's always been there when we needed him. And so I'm, I, I trust that he will follow um, his own values and be with us in the end. Karen Milton from Cobalt, thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We're all set. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time.